In this lecture, we will discuss TSNI. TSNI stands for T distributed stochastic neighbor embedding. It is a quite a popular method to visualize higher dimensional data in lower dimension. And it is a non-linear technique of dimension reduction. Now, before I go and explain what is TSNI, let me give you one example. Here in this figure, what I have done, I have a gene expression data set uh, for around 8 cell type. Each cell type has hundreds of cells and uh, for around 2000 genes, 1800 something, we have a measurement for gene expression. So, you can imagine the dimension of the data is then 18000 uh, something. So, we cannot visualize it. So, visualize to visualize this data, we have to reduce the dimension of it. So, what I have done, I have used TSNI to visualize or embed this data in two dimension. So, here is the two dimensional plot. Each of this plot, each of this dot here is one cell and that belongs to one of the cell types and those are colored based upon which cell type they are. Now, here you can easily see the dispersion among the different cell types. There are some amount of clusters, in some cases there is no cluster, there is a diffusion also. So, this is how you can visualize a higher dimensional data like a gene expression data using TSNI in two dimension or in three dimension. Now, unlike other uh, dimension reduction techniques like PCA, TSNI focuses on the issue of neighbor relationship. That means, it tries to embed the data in such a way that the local information, local neighborhood in information in the higher dimension is retained. So, the objective of TSNI is in general is to embed the data from higher dimension to a lower dimension by optimally preserving the neighborhood identity. Now, how that should be done? How should we keep a focus on the neighborhood and uh, rather than on the global information, we focus on the neighbor information and try to embed uh, by maintaining the neighborhood relationship. How can I do that? To understand how TSNI work, we have to first understand the first version or first avatar of this method called SNE, Stochastic Neighbor Embedding. So, to explain SNE, what I will do, I will take a two dimensional uh, data and then imagine I am trying to embed it in one dimension. So, from two dimension, I am going to one dimension. So, in this two dimension data, suppose I have uh, five data point and I have shown them here. Now, for each of this data point, uh, you take another point. So, you have a pair. For example, in the figure, I have shown two yellow dot. One is xi, another one is xj. So, use some measure of distance or dissimilarity between data points. For example, you can use Euclidean, Mahalanobis distance, whatever is meaningful for you. Then you calculate the distance between this xi and xj. And suppose that is dij. In this way, I can have 5 choose 2 pairs, right? So, I can have uh, 10 pairs. So, I can calculate this distance between uh, for each of this pair, right? I should have dij for each of this 10 pair. So, you calculate the pairwise distance data or dissimilarity data. But the interesting thing is in SNE, I will not use these distance data or dissimilarity data in higher dimension directly to embed in the lower dimension. I will use some probabilistic measure that I will calculate from this distance measure. And how I will do it? I will explain that. So, what I am doing, I will calculate a probabilistic similarity from the dig data. So, do that, we will you calculate a conditional probability. In this case, I am comparing xi and xj. So, the pr conditional probability pj given i is given by this formula, where in the numerator you have exponential to the power e to the power minus dij square. dij is the distance of dissimilarity between xi and xj. You are taking the square of that divided by 2 into sigma i square. Essentially, sigma is a variance term. Sigma square is a variance term and I will explain that. In the numerator, what you have? You have a summation thing. This part, the denominator part where you have the summation, this is actually nothing but normalization. What you are doing here is that see, I have 
the calculated in the numerator I have calculated e to the power minus d i j square by 2 sigma i square for x i and x j pair. But now taking x i you can pair up with other three data points. So, for all these four pair for x i you calculate this numerator value and then you sum them up together and put that in the denominator. That will give us this p j given i conditional probability of j given i. Now, this looks bit complicated is not it? Why are we doing this? Pay attention to this part. In fact, this probability calculation is not very complicated. Essentially, this formulation, this function is nothing but a normal distribution. Let me explain that. This is the PDF of normal distribution. We have studied that earlier, very early in our course. And you focus here. In Gaussian distribution PDF, you have e to the power minus half x minus mu square divided by sigma square. The equivalent thing is this one in place of x minus mu you have d i j and you have sigma here, you have sigma i here and you have 2 here and you also have 2 here. So, although it looks this function looks bit complicated this p j i p j given i is nothing this conditional probability is nothing but a Gaussian distribution. And what I did, I did just a simple plot. I uh, set uh, sigma square equal to 2, this sigma i equal square equal to 2 and created a plot where I have in the horizontal axis I have a distance d i j right. And in the vertical axis I have this conditional probability calculated using this formula. And the brown line is the result. You can easily see this is half of the normal distribution with a mean at 0. We do not have the other half because in my calculation I have considered distance to be only positive that distance has negative distance has no meaning. So, I have taken distance 0 to up to suppose high, higher value 5 positive value is 5. So, I have half of the normal distribution and you can easily see this is essentially nothing but a Gaussian distribution. So, what we are doing? We are calculating this uh, uh, p j i for x i and x j. Similarly, I can also calculate p i given j conditional probability of i given j using the same formula. Now, you sum them together and you divide by 2 into n where n is the uh, total number of total data total number of data point and I get a joint probability p i j. So, I will in my calculation now I will forget about d i j the distance or dissimilarity between x i and x j rather I will do all further calculation using this p i j. And while doing this calculation if you have noticed that I have to set this value sigma i because in this equation d i j is coming from the original data set the dissimilarity data that I have in higher dimension. But how do I know sigma i? Okay, sigma i is this is a actually a parameter in your uh, this uh, algorithm and that is uh, decided by a tuning parameter that you can uh, tune as a uh, user and that is called perplexity. So, once you set the value of that perplexity this sigma i's value will also be decided. So, in this way I can calculate p i j for all the data pairs. In this case, I have 5 data points that means I can have 10 pairs. So, I calculate p i j the joint probability from their distance measure right. I can cal I calculate all these 10 probability values. Now, in as I said in place of distance between these 10 pair in this ten, for these 10 pairs, I will use their corresponding probabilities. Before I move further, let me explain another issue here. See, I have say I am saying that I will not use directly the distance d i j, but I will use the probability p i j. So, how do will that uh, get changed? How the p i j uh, will affect my further calculation? See, suppose if I take one data, uh, suppose the distance is 1, suppose the distance is 1. So, then if I consider d i j equal to 1, then the corresponding probability somewhere is here suppose 0 
Now, let me take a double distance. Suppose the distance between x i and uh, x i and x j is 2. So, I have doubled the distance. What is the probability? Probability is a very low value. So, you can see if I have used the original distance measure d i j, then I am just doubling the distance. I am just doubling the dissimilarity. But in if I use this normal distribution, Gaussian distribution to transform that distance to probability term, then the dissimilarity score, the weightage will become very large because you can easily see it has fall such an amount. So, that is the advantage of using these normal distribution rather than and calculating the probability and rather than using the original distance or dissimilarities. Now, uh, let us move forward. This is the way I have calculated all the probability, all these 10 probabilities. Now, I have to embed this data using this PIJ to some way, in some way on a lower dimension. So, my system is two dimension as I said. So, I will embed it in one dimension. So, one dimension will be a line. So, what I have done, the first step of the algorithm will do, it will arrange the data point in this lower dimension, that means in this line, in this case, randomly, without any bias, suppose it is randomly distributed. Now, what the algorithm will do, it will calculate Euclidean distance for each pair. So, I have 10 pair, for example, now if I take x i and x j, then it will calculate the Euclidean distance in this lower dimension where it has randomly uh, placed all this data point. So, it will calculate E i j the Euclidean distance. So, in this way it can calculate the E i j Euclidean distance for all these pairs possible in this case 10 pairs. Now, as we have no, are not using the distance measure in higher dimension directly, we are calculating a probability based on the Gaussian distribution using the distance measure. In this case also, we will use the same normal distribution, same function, but what we will do? We will use E i j in place of D i j. E i j is what? E i j is the Euclidean distance of this data now arranged in the lower dimension. In this case, one dimension. And we will do some other change also. We will consider the sigma square, the variance as constant it will not affect much of our calculation, but it will make it life easy. So, we will consider is half. If you put this value in the original equation that we discussed a uh, few slides back, you will find uh, it will cancel 2 in the denominator in the exponential term. So, my calculation will be much easy and it will be uniform. So, what I am doing just like P i j, I am calculating Q i j, but now for the lower dimensional data where I have placed the data randomly but I am using the same formulation, same normal uh, distribution or Gaussian uh, function and I am using E i j and I am using sigma square equal to half. So, I have 10 pairs in this example, that means all the pairs possible. So, I calculate Q i j for all of those pairs. So, now what do I have? For higher dimensional original data set, I have a list of P i j. In this case, 10 example, 10 pairs are possible. So, I have 10 p i j values. Similarly, in lower dimension where I have randomly placed the data points, I have q i j. Now, if I have arranged the data correctly in the lower dimension, then what do you expect? Then you will expect that the neighborhood relationship, that means the dissimilarity or distance between each of the data point is retained and as I am using both the same function to calculate the probability, then the p i j calculated for higher dimension and q i j calculated for lower dimension, they should be exactly same, is not it? So, if I make a table of p i j value and q i j value and if I have maintained this neighborhood relationship, the dissimilarity between data points in higher dimension exactly same in lower dimension, then this p i j and q i j should be same. But obviously, you know that this can is not possible because anyway, I am taking the data from very high, di high dimension to a very low dimension. But your intention, the algorithm should try to keep p i j and q i j close to each other for all the pairs. So, that is what we have to focus on now. 
Now what we will do? We will use a loss function or cost function to calculate the difference between these PIJ values and the QIJ values. And the loss function or cost function that will be used is called KL divergence. We will not go in details of that. But intuitively you can understand what this equation is telling. See what I have here inside this summation I have log of Pij divided by Qij. Now remember my grand goal is that the ideal situation would be that if all Qij is same as all the Pij values. Now if that is true if somehow I can manage to do that then what will happen? this Pij and Qij here will be same. So, they will cancel each other. That means, I will get log 1 and I will get log 1 for all the pairs of data. Now, log 1 is 0 and you are doing a summation. So, you have summation of these zeros. So, L the loss function will be 0, but that is the ideal case. You will not get a, a situation where in reality that loss function will be 0. But as you can understand here, this loss function the way we have defined when my embedding of data from higher dimension and lower dimension is perfect. In that case, L will take the minimum value and that minimum value will be 0. So, now we have got a handle to optimize, use some optimization technique to solve this problem. I started by randomly embedding, randomly placing the data from two dimension to one dimension, from higher dimension to lower dimension and I calculated Qij, then I calculated the L, the loss or the cost. Now what I will do, my algorithm will rearrange the data again in the lower dimension here in this line in such a way that L get minimized and it will keep on doing that iteratively. So, the objective now is to minimize the L and to do that it will keep on jumbling rearranging the data in this lower dimension keep on calculating Qij you calculate the L and once it has minimized it will stop. So, that is my final result that is my final embedding the best embedding I could have achieved using this iterative optimization method. That is what is stochastic neighbor embedding. You are not using the dis directly the distance or dissimilarity measure in higher dimension. You are using that dissimilarity score or distance measure of higher dimension in pairwise data to convert them in some probability, joint probability using Gaussian distribution because in Gaussian distribution what we are again getting that the, that if the distance or dissimilarity is big the weightage or score become lower whereas when they are close that means they are close neighbors their weightage becomes very high. Using that I calculate Pij and then I rearrange that I put the data or embed the data in lower dimension in such a way that when I will calculate Qij there using the same formula the difference between Pij and Qij is the least one and the embedding the distribution of the data in lower dimension that give me the least cost least L value is my final result. That is all for SNE. Now, we will move into the next of the of SNE that is called TSNE. TSNE will not use normal distribution. Remember in SNE I am using Gaussian or normal distribution both for the higher dimensional data as well as for calculation of Qij in the lower dimension also. But in TSNE we will not use Gaussian distribution for calculation in lower dimension rather it will use T distribution to calculate this Qij in the lower dimension where I have embedded the data. And I have given the uh, function by which they actually calculate the Qij. Now, the key question here is why I am uh, ditching normal distribution in lower dimension and going for T distribution that I will explain. The objective here is that see I want to focus more on local information in TSNE, not on the global information. 
So, you want to perform the embedding in such a way that the points which are close in higher dimension become much closer or compact in lower dimension. Whereas, data points which are far away in higher dimension also move away, repel each other in the lower dimension. That you want to do, that you want to intentionally do in TSNI. So, you will, you want data points which are close or neighbor in higher dimension, you want them push them together, close together in lower dimension. Whereas, data which are far away in higher dimension, you want to force them away. And that is nicely achieved using T distribution. Let me explain. What I have shown here, so I have x, you can consider this equivalent to uh, distance or dissimilarity and you have density which are the uh, probabilities we were calculating earlier. I have shown two distribution. Obviously, they are half because I am not taking negative values for x or d. So, this uh, yellow one is a normal distribution with 0 mean and 1 variance and you can imagine this uh, I will use in the higher dimension. So, they, it represents the uh, probabilistic calculation in the higher dimension. Whereas, this blue line is a t distribution of degree of freedom 1 and it will be used for lower dimension. Right? So, the blue yellow line uh, uh, curve will be used for calculation in the higher dimension for p i j calculation and suppose the lower dim one dimension q i j calculation will be using this t distribution. Now, suppose in higher dimension the distance between a particular pair, a particular pair is 1. Suppose this that pair is a x i and x j. So, the distance between a dissimilarity score between them is 1. So, if I calculate the probability using a Gaussian distribution, I will get a score something like this one 0.25. Now, this is Pij, right. Now, what you want? You want to embed these two data points in lower dimension in such a way that you when you calculate qij the probability in lower dimension that value is very close to this value and the perfect embedding will be when they are same fine. So, consider that you have done achieved perfect embedding that means in the lower dimension also the qij value or the probability value will be this 0.25 fine I, I want to achieve that in the lower dimension, but in lower dimension in TSNI I am not using the Gaussian distribution in calculation anymore, I am using T distribution. So, then I move from here and I land up in this T distribution curve and go down on the distance axis. So, that means in the lower dimension, I have to put the data with a distance 0.5. So, that means if in higher dimension, in higher dimension, if x i and x j were at a distance of 1, when I will embed that in lower dimension and if I am using TSNI, the best one would be if I put them at a distance of 0.5. So, that means these two data points as they were close in the higher dimension, they became much closer in lower dimension one part of my objective is done. Now, let us look about those data points which are far away in higher dimension, what will happen? So, imagine now that the distance between x i and x j is this near 0.25. So, I will not use it directly that value, I will calculate the probability. Okay. So, I will go up in this Gaussian curve and I will calculate the probability along this horizontal dotted line and this is the probability. Now, I want to embed the data in lower dimension, in ideal case in the lower dimension also the probability the qij should be same as that one, fine. Okay. Let us move along this line horizontally. Now, for lower dimension I am using t distribution, this blue line and if you remember t distribution for less degree or lower value of degree of freedom has a fat tail and that differentiate it with respect to normal distribution does a fat tail. So, as you can see the tail near that position is much fatter in t distribution in the blue curve than the yellow brown curve which is normal distribution. 
So, now I have reached this point which is on the t distribution curve and if I look into the distance corresponding distance the distance is this one. So, in higher dimension the distance is around 2.5, but when you will embed that using t distribution it will the distance between these two point will become something near 3.5. So, this data point have shifted away, they have repelled each other. So, my objective is achieved by using t distribution in the calculation for lower dimension embedding t SNE achieves this that it compacts the data point which are closer in neighborhood in higher dimension much more close and it pushes away data point which are further away in the higher dimension the it pushes is further in the lower dimension. That is all how SNE and t SNE works and they differ. Now, one important point as I said earlier that the sigma right the variance in my probability calculation in higher dimension is controlled by a tuning parameter called perplexity. I will not go in details of the mathematical formulation of perplexity, but let us try to get a uh, feel of it what it is doing. It essentially decides how much attention you put on the neighborhood rather than the global features global distribution. Right. So, it decide how much in a way it decide uh, how uh, what should be the neighborhood whether the neighbor should be big or the neighbor should be compact something like that. And uh, you should never take a perplexity value which should not be ever be uh, small uh, you know smaller than the number of data points. And people have suggested that the range of perplexity value should be between 5 to 50. But although these are thumb rules you have to be very careful when you are performing TSNE because changing perplexity values the p value in this case if I write shortly can actually change the whole embedding and actually it can uh, spoil the whole uh, your whole purpose. Let me give you one example what I have this original one what I am doing actually I am using a synthetic data. So, this is the original one. So, I have a two dimensional synthetic data and you can see it has two groups yellow one and the brown one and I will embed using TSNE in the two dimension itself. So, that you can easily understand what is happening because I will change the perplexity value in each of this case. So, I have tested three perplexity value 5, 25 and 50. You can see when p is low all these groups right the green yellow and the uh, blue one they are clubbed together right. Although in original space original data they are separate groups, but now they have come together. Now, what has happened here is that as you have considered perplexity value very low, it has focused too much on the local information. So, it has not bothered to focus that okay, I had globally two groups, it has considered all of them to as a single unit and focused on narrowly on uh, around the neighborhood of each of these data point. So, it has collapsed everything in one club, one cluster. If I consider p equal to 25, I still have uh, two groups you can easily see. Now, if you use p 50 then strange shapes and large dispersion comes. So, that is why you cannot actually use any particular fixed value or perplexity for your particular work you have to may have to try multiple value of p perplexity and find out which one is creating a meaningful embedding. Now, uh, I will discuss two important issue in uh, TSNE. So, TSNE is a very good and popular method for visualization. You want to embed the higher dimensional data in lower dimension and visualize it, but sometime by mistake we try to take you know extract different meaning out of this visualization and we should be very careful about that and we should avoid that. For example, what I am trying to show here again with synthetic data this is the original I have two uh, groups blue and yellow and they are segregated in two dimension properly. And I have done TSNE with different perplexity value 5, 25 and 50 and you can see obviously the results are different. Now, in this case when you will do in real life you will not know the original one right you will not know that in this case it is simulated data so I know it. So, suppose you have done with t equal to 25 and you have seen 
that uh, both the blue uh, group and the uh, brown group are quite large group and they are large clusters. So, you may tend to conclude that both these groups are large clusters. I am talking of the size not the numbers of data points right? as a whole the size the area if you consider. But in reality actually that is not true. In reality the blue one is very compact very compact whereas the uh, yellow one is quite dispersed. So, just looking at the Tisney plot we should not try to make a meaning about the compactness or uh, the cluster size in the higher dimensional data. We should never try to make a meaning out of it. Next one again a common uh, trap we usually fall into. This is the original data again simulated. So, I have three groups in three different colors and I have performed uh, Tisney with three perplexity values. Uh, this p equal to 5 is very low forget about that. Consider 25 and 50 in all these cases you can see I have three clusters and they are color coded properly. So, that there is no mixing of groups right and they are almost equidistant to each other. Now, remember when you will do the real life Disney you will not know this data it is simulated data that is why I know the original one. In real data you do not know the, uh, the higher dimensional data how it is dispersed. You will only see this one suppose you have done this. So, once you have got this plot you may tend to conclude that the in the original data these three groups are well dispersed they are well away from each other, but that is not true look into the original data this yellow group and green group are close to each other than this blue group. So, how they are separated what is the distance between different cluster in my Tisney plot in two dimension may not match with how they are dispersed or organized in higher dimension. So, we should not try to make a meaning of the distance in the cluster in our Tisney plot. Okay, that this brings me uh, to the end of this lecture let me jot down the key point. So, Tisney is a very useful tool for visualization of higher dimensional data in two dimension or in three dimension and it is quite often used for that purpose. It embeds the higher dimension data in lower dimension while preserving the local information or the neighborhood information or neighborhood relationship in the higher dimension. Now, it uses a probabilistic measure as we said uh, in original SNE it will use the both Gaussian distribution for both the calculation and in Tisney it will use Gaussian and T distribution. So, it is a probabilistic measure of distance or dissimilarity between data points the pairs. And as I said in contrast to SNE Tisney use T distribution right. The advantage of using T distribution as we discussed earlier is that it will pull close point closer and it will push further points away from each other. Now, one key parameter while you are performing uh, uh, Tisney is perplexity and as I explained with diagram you should choose this perplexity value very judiciously. That is all thank you for learning with me today.